Why hello YouTube, Crone Education here bringing you another video this time on outliers, influence points, and leverage points and how to find them in SAS. I already have data set up for us here, let's just go ahead and run. I have a nice scatter plot set up for us with a regression line so that we can analyze this data. So here is what we're working with. We have a total of 12 observations and you can see that most of them follow a very strong linear trend with one abnormal observation at the top here. Now a lot of you are probably saying, well that one at the top is obviously an outlier. Well the goal of this video is not to just stare at the scatter plot and try to determine which points are outliers. We're going to come up with formal ways using SAS programming to say yes, that point is indeed an outlier, maybe it's a leverage point, maybe it's an influence point. But that's what we're going to be working on and we'll break this down step by step for each of those three types of observations. And we're going to start with finding outliers. So let's go back to our text editor and this first bit of code will be used to find outliers. So here we have it, it's just going to be proc reg. This should look very familiar to you if you've done any regression an analysis inside of SAS. So proc reg data is just specify what data we're using. We're using the demo data. I'm modeling, uh, I just have a Y and an X essentially or a response and a predictor. And then really the big difference here is that we're going to use that forward slash R option. And now let's just go ahead and run this. Okay, so first let's just define what an outlier is. Depending upon where you look this up, you'll probably find a different definition, but an outlier is really just an extreme observation. And the way that we detect if something is an outlier is going to be with studentized residuals. Now, we're going to detect them using studentized residuals, but there are also several kinds of studentized residuals. There are semi-studentized, regular studentized, and then studentized deleted. Now, I will show you how to get studentized and studentized deleted uh, in a second here, but first let's just focus on the chart that it gives us with the studentized residuals. So this gives us a nice breakdown, and across the top here are the standard deviations. So finding the studentized residual, they essentially take the residual, divide it by the standard deviation, so that we can see how many standard deviations away from the mean we have. So uh, away from zero, this one's over one standard deviation away. These all look very good. And then we have observation 12, which is terrible, over three uh, standard deviations away. Now, depending upon which source you look at, some people say if it's greater than two, uh, you might consider it an outlier. If it's greater than three, it's definitely considered an outlier. But here, there's no doubt about it. Observation 12 would be considered an outlier. It's greater than three standard deviations away. Now, this chart here is very useful, but we only have 12 observations. So remember, if you have something like 2,000 observations, this chart is going to get very big very fast. And if you have that large of a data set, I would argue that it would be much easier just to look at a table that is nice and uh, nicely sorted by studentized residuals. And we can do that quite easily, and that's the next thing that I'm going to do in SAS here. So let's go back and I'm going to modify our proc reg procedure and I'm going to add another line inside that's uh, essentially just an output line where we're going to create a new set of data. So I'm going to say output, create a new set of data called demo1 and I want it to contain the studentized residuals, that's what student gives us, and then this is just whatever name that you'd like to name it, I call it stud resids. And then I also want it to include our student, which is the deleted studentized residuals, and then I call that student deleted resids. So let's go ahead and run this, and I'm actually going to add a proc print down here, so proc print, that equals demo one. That way we can just see what this is going to end up giving us. And make sure you run it with the proc reg as well so that it can create that new data set demo one. Okay, very good. So it still includes the response, the predictor, and now it gives us a column for studentized residuals. And then it also gives us a column for studentized deleted residuals. And I think this is a good place to stop and talk about just what the difference is here. Now I'm not going to talk about exactly how these are calculated, but I'll give you a broad overview. So I said already that studentized residuals are essentially, it takes the residual, divides it by its standard deviation. That way we can say, well, it's three standard deviations away. But the studentized deleted residual, that takes a certain observation, removes it from the data set, runs the regression on the new data set with that observation removed, and then it goes ahead and determines how far away the residual is from that new data set or that new regression line. So that's the big difference. Now 
Now that we have our nice chart, let's say that we want to sort it. Well, sorting it's quite easy. There's just a proc sort, and we can come up here. Let's just add our proc sort in there, and we'll say proc sort data equals demo one semicolon, and now we put by and essentially how we want to sort it. So I'm going to sort it by std resids, and then run, and let's just run all these again. Okay, very good, it's sorted now, not much has changed. Uh, this was down in the column a bit further, but it looks like our end values are still the same. So now, analyzing this, we can say, well, the only one above three standard deviations is observation 12, so this we will consider our outlier for this set of data. And now that does it for outliers. Now we're going to change gears and we'll talk about something incredibly similar, which is an influence point. An influence point is really just any observation that has a significant impact on the regression coefficients. And I can tell you if we went back to our scatter plot, in fact, let's run this again. I can tell you that this observation has a significant impact. If, in fact, if it weren't for this observation, I would assume that this regression line would go straight through all of these and then end up uh, approximately landing on this last observation down here. So I'm expecting already that this observation would be an influence point. So then how do we go about finding an influence point? Well, it is actually incredibly similar to what we just did. In fact, we can keep all the same code. It's still going to be forward slash r. And the only thing that we're going to end up adding out here is a cook's distance. So cook d equals cook. And we can add that there. And before we even run this, we can go back and take a look at the chart that was provided to us just by the forward slash r option because this actually already provides us with a chart of Cook's distance. And here it is, yes. So now Cook's distance is used to measure influence points. And in fact, it even gives us our cutoff down here. So it says if Cook's distance is greater than or equal to four divided by n, and we have 12 points, four divided by 12, that's 0 0.333, which makes sense, should be one third. So if it's greater than that, then we're going to consider an influence point. So notice that we have two influence points. It even graphs our cutoff here, a cutoff of 0 0.333. So observation 1 and observation 12 would be considered influence points. So let's just go back to our scatter plot now and make sure that makes sense. So I said observation 1 and observation 12. Well, observation 1 is 0 0.9.50. So 0 0.9.50. That means this is that uh, this observation way over here, and then observation 12 is 0.525. So 525, this is this observation way up here. So given our Cook's distance chart we analyzed, we can already determine that these two points are influence points. But let's say you want the chart just like we did with studentized residuals and studentized deleted residuals. Well, then we can go back here, and this is what I was showing you earlier. We can just add Cook's distance equals Cook, then we could come down here and then just go through the same scenario and we could sort by Cook's distance down here and get our nice chart just like we did with the studentized residuals. So that does it for influence points. Now the next and last type of observation we'll talk about is going to be a leverage point. So what is a leverage point and how does it differ from say an influence point? Now an influence point we said has a dramatic effect or a noticeable effect on the regression coefficients. A leverage point is a point that sits remote in the predictor space, meaning it's far away from the rest of the observations, but it doesn't necessarily have a large effect or a noticeable effect on the regression coefficients. Now, it might be sitting far away from the rest of the observations, but it uh, might also still be, end up being on the regression line, and that's why it ends up not affecting the regression coefficients, which makes sense. But the leverage point also does affect other statistics like R squared and standard error of coefficients. So it still does have some effect and that's why we wanna determine if something is a leverage point. So now how do you find a leverage point? Well, I can tell you that one way is you can use linear algebra and find the hat matrix. And if you Google this, I'm sure there will be numerous hits explaining how to do that. But of course, we're going to do it in SAS. We're not going to be doing it by hand and doing linear algebra by hand. Okay, so we're first going to now create a new procedure. So we're still going to use proc reg, but I'm just going to create a new procedure to make things a bit more neat in my text editor here. Okay, so here we go, I'll paste this in. So it's just going to be proc reg, 
we're using the original data here, not demo one, then model is going to be the same, response equals predictor, and now instead of forward slash r, it's going to be forward slash influence. Now this next line is incredibly similar to what we did before. I'm just saying create a new set of data. It'll be demo two now. And in that, I want you to include the leverage or the statistic H. And while we're here, and since we already talked about this, I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. So I'm just going to sort demo two by leverage, and then we'll just go ahead and run and print this out. Okay, here we have it. So now we have this leverage statistic, and then we have our response and our predictor, and now it's also nice and sorted. But now what do we compare this to? Unfortunately, finding leverage points isn't quite as easy as outliers and influence points. So when we find leverage points, we actually need to do some calculations. So let's go back to our text editor here, and I'll do some pasting again. The cutoff is going to be a hand calculation, which is going to be 2 times k plus 1 divided by n. Now k is the number of predictors, and n is just the number of observations. Now notice here, I have a note that says k is equal to the number of predictors not including the intercept. So here we only have one not including the intercept. So now one plus one is two, and then if you end up calculating this out, you're going to get two times two divided by 12, four divided by 12 is equal to one third. So now we know our cutoff, so if anything is greater than one third, we're going to consider it a leverage point. So let's go back now, knowing our cutoff, and we can look at these, they're all sorted here, smallest at the top, as we keep going down, anything greater than 0.33. And the only thing that is greater than 0.33 is this observation 12. Well, which one is observation 12? It looked like it was had a y value of 0 and an x value of 9.5. So let's go back up to our scatter plot. Let's run this again. Okay, yes, looks good. Y value of 0. This was observation 12 and an x value of 9.5, and this makes sense. Recall the definition of a leverage point. I said that it is remote in the predictor space, but not necessarily having a large effect on the regression coefficients, and that matches our definition exactly. Okay, but that does it for this video on outliers, influence points, and leverage points. As always, I hope this helped you out, and thanks for watching.